Hey guys, just another quick follow-up video on the little mini low-powered home TV in the log transmitter station. A number of you expect interest in seeing what was actually inside of one of these, so I'm taking it apart. All I'm doing is unscrewing these four little plastic standoffs. And should come apart. Yeah. yeah, figured there wasn't a whole lot to it. What do we got? Boy, that's hard to read. Well, we have three ICs for sure. By zooming in on some photos I took, I was able to identify each of these chips. I will put them in the description with links to their data sheets. Uh, that guy is an HDMI converter. So it will take a digital stream coming in on this connector here and decode it essentially to composite video and audio. Now that guy is a microcontroller. And it's based on the venerable 8051, going way back to the late 70s, early 80s. And that guy is an interesting chip. I, I wasn't aware that this thing existed, or why it still exists. It is a programmable modulator. So an agile modulator on a chip. So it'll take, uh, again, the composite uh, video and audio. So either inputs from this or the output of that chip. And AM modulate the video, FM modulate the audio to a programmable carrier frequency. And you can also program the audio carrier and probably a whole bunch of parameters. So it's an all-in-one Agile modulator on a tiny little chip. This stuff is the output amplifier. And there's probably some stuff under there as well and that could be a heat sink hard to say I'm not going to pry it off but that's the output so obviously the the uh, the output of this needs to get amplified and it eventually finds its way over to that so if one wanted to change the carrier frequencies it seems to me you're going to want to program that guy can you do it that I don't know for sure at least one signal from this chip goes to this p1 connector that's not populated Possibly you could put a connector on that and program that. I don't know if it's an OTP one-time programmable or if you can redo it in flash or whatnot or read the code out. If you read the code out and you do a little reading up on how that works, you could probably search for like the registers, hexadecimal value for certain registers in that or knowing what frequencies this supports, maybe look for those values in a table or something like that. And I, I would imagine that it wouldn't be too hard once you can locate that table of available frequencies and modify it for domestic U.S. use, if you really want to go that far. Now, commercial Agile modulators like Blonder Tongues and Drakes and others are readily available on eBay. And yes, they're very high quality. Of course, they're vastly larger than this and they don't, you can't feed HDMI into them. It's not an all-in-one solution. You need a blonder, blonder tongue modulator and other stuff. But for a quick and easy all-in-one solution, hook up power feed and a signal, screw in the antenna and you are on the air. I still think it's a really cool device. And luckily one of the channels this does support as is, is within 250 kilohertz of a US channel. So there you go. If somebody wants to <laughs> look up those data sheets, look up this guy, and maybe it can be reprogrammed. There's a bunch of them, not only in AliExpress, but there's a seems to be a flood of them on eBay. This this seems to happen. Every few years there's some new low-cost gadget that comes out, like those component testers. Uh there are still quite popular and then they'll get repackaged and resold by dozens of vendors and then maybe in two three years they'll disappear so that i showed you that higher power one this is a low power one there's an fm only version of this and i'm sure there are other versions of it you maybe you could contact somebody that's 
making these. They're all made in China, I'm sure. Uh, so I imagine it'd be a little tough to track down somebody, but the source code's got to be out there. Somebody or a number of places, 